So yeah, so I'm Alexander Madri, and what I wanted to tell you about is about a new team I'm building at OpenAI, and you will see in a moment why this is happening in the governance session, the, the most exciting one, by the way. So, uh, okay, so I think it doesn't come as a surprise that we at OpenAI think a lot about AI or AGI, whichever you prefer. And in particular, a big focus of what we are trying to do is to try to think you know, how to make sure that we indeed get to this you know, AI slash AGI upside. Okay? That actually, like yes, we are excited about some things uh, that AI can bring, but you know, it is not preordained. We actually need to work hard to get there. Right? So in particular, you know, even if we do not have AGI yet, what, I don't know what you read in the newspapers, we don't have AGI. Uh, so, but you know, our systems are already very capable and increasingly so, yes, we are working hard on this. And the additional catalyst here is the fact that you know, these systems are being integrated with the whole social, social technological systems. Like we are raising GPTs, we are kind of, there are other ways in which people integrate and leverage this model. So things become more complicated here. And also, you know, uh, the question that in particular we are asking ourselves, we are asking ourselves many questions, but one of them is, you know, how does this change the safety picture here, okay? And by safety, I mean, you know, the broadly safety. It's not just AI safety, but internal safety. All the things that we worry about in the world going, going the wrong way, how does the progress in AI being built by OpenAI or someone else, how does it impact anything? And what is particularly important to me, how do we really know that this picture has changed or has not changed. Okay? So, you know, I'm, when I talk about safety, yes, it's not only AI safety, it's also like not only existential risks, it's essentially anything that is merely catastrophic, whatever catastrophic means for you. Okay. So, yeah, so that's the question. You know, how do we prepare ourselves for that? How do we prepare the world for that, what this technology is bringing? Well, what do you do when you need to solve some problem? In academia, you start a committee. In industry, you start a team. Uh, so that's what essentially the role of preparedness is. And the very important thing in, you know, in, when you start any team is branding. So this is essentially our mascot that was generated using you know, a, a DALI tree. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Kevin, for doing that. The important artifact here is the hat which actually spells OpenAI, except it doesn't, but we realize that this is how AI wants to spell OpenAI, so that's how we do it. Okay, so what will this team preparedness do, right? So essentially, like, the way I like to explain it is a saying, think of the safety as a kind of a spectrum. And on one part of, uh, end of the spectrum, we have essentially worrying about you know, bad people exploiting our systems, our meaning OpenAI systems, to do bad things. And well, we have a team called the Safety Systems, an amazing team, that really focuses that this does not happen. Then there is the other end of the spectrum in which we worry about bad AIs doing bad things to people. And that's another great team called Super Alignment that is working at OpenAI. So what is left? Well, what is left is thinking about you know, bad people doing bad things with AI, okay? And that's exactly where preparedness tries to, like what it tries to worry about, essentially. Like how, again, how does this things that the bad actors can do with AI change over time? And you know, what do we do to contain that? So in particular, I view the role of preparedness as kind of uh, corresponding to three things. So first of all, we want to figure out a way to evaluate, you know, what is the level of risk of, this, uh, of AI right now? We want to, of course, not just do it once. We actually want to continuously track it. But also, kind of, you know, we not only want to track what's happening right now, we want to try to forecast you know, how we expect these risks to evolve in the, you know, in the future. And importantly, and that's the, one of the reasons why this, is, this talk is happening in, govern, uh, in the governance session, is it's not just about doing the science and getting the measurement, it's also about figuring out the concrete procedures, infrastructures, and partnerships to protect against this, uh, these risks. Because in the end, it's not only about knowing what are the problems, but also making sure that, again, both the company and the world actually prepares and you know, properly knows how to navigate these risks. Okay? So what are the guiding principles of what we are trying to accomplish? 
Well, essentially, first of all, we really want to be driven by facts and science. So what I usually tell people on my team is, again, we can come with all this, come up with all this elaborate, you know, elaborate scenarios, you know, and very compelling things of how things can go wrong, and that's extremely useful. That's how kind of we expand the, you know, the spectrum of the risks we are looking at. But in the end, we need to be able to say that either is this risk real, or more importantly, is this risk not real yet? And again, especially when you say that this is not a risk yet, you better be very confident that you really, really like having a good basis to make that statement. So that's where exactly facts and science is really important. And, you know, and in general, like what we realize, which is you know, we all can change, there is not that much science in this space yet. Okay? The other one is being proactive about risk mitigation. So again, we can do all the great science, we can do all the great monitoring, but if one day we just wake up and saying, oops, this model is actually doing some very bad stuff, well, that may be a bit too late to do anything about this. You know, like think about, first of all, this harm might already happen, be or be happening, or you know, if this is, you know, also, you probably would want to make sure that no one steals your model. And maybe if the model gets some additional you know, capabilities that you might not have realized in time, the stakes of people wanting to get these models, like uh, the stakes to like, kind of uh, uh, get these models my race, so your security has to be commensurate with that. And again, this has to happen proactively and no, not as an afterthought. And finally, you know, we want to think holistically about the risks and benefits, meaning, okay, yes, developing AI leads to risks. That's, that's something we need to be very clear-eyed clear about. But we need to also be able to do this calculus, like is it more beneficial to do it in a, a careful manner or not? And kind of figuring out what is the right way to strike the balance, is that something that is very important to the core of the mission of the team? Okay, and by the way, the other, I guess, you know, uh, guiding principle here is paranoia. So essentially be always on the lookout for unknown unknowns. Just because you, know, you evaluated carefully things that are natural for you to check does not mean that you are not missing something important. So kind of having this, always this process running in your background of looking for unknowns, unknowns is very, very important. And also learning from others uh, what they might be finding is important as well. Okay, so in particular, you know, one principle that OpenAI is exposing is something called iterative deployment, in which exactly we want to deploy the models in a careful manner to learn from, you know, what's going on uh, that, you know, when people start using these models. Because again, some of these unknowns unknowns is something we will never come up with when just sitting in the room and thinking deeply. You know, even though we have some very smart people thinking about that, it's only by seeing the, you know, creativity of the whole you know, humanity, well then we can realize that, oops, there might be things we need to pay more attention to, okay? So in particular, just again, in the theme of the governance, of the governance uh, kind of session is, we realize, okay, this is not just a matter about standing up a team and starting doing the work, it's also about the process, about setting up a framework. And that's what something called preparedness framework, that's essentially what we are you know, putting finishing touches, touches to. So what is preparedness framework? It's essentially a document that operationalizes much of preparedness missions, mission. And I underlined operationalization because this is really important. Just wanting to do something might not be enough when we talk about safety. It's about, again, you have to have processes. You have to have ways to make sure that things that need to happen, happen and happen repeatedly and reliably. Okay, so in particular, we are explicit about, about the you know, risks that we are tracking through our evals and how do we grade these risks. For now, we focus on these four categories of individual persuasion, cybersecurity, the cyber threats, so chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats, and model autonomy. But of course, we have also an explicit process for trying to identify unknowns, unknowns, and unknown unknowns and add them to the risk tract. Also, we are establishing what we call safety baselines, essentially like some guidance and you know, of when will we stop the deployment, when will we stop the development of the model, and essentially how do we amp security uh, as we are learning about the risk picture over there. Okay, and importantly, again, this is not just about these baselines, it's about the governance. It's about the question how these baselines are enforced, how do we make a decision to, to kind of activate a baseline and all of this, and that's actually an important part of this, of this document, and part that, by the way, the whole company took part in shaping. So in particular, one of these aspects of the governance will be creating a cross-functional advisory body, which we call safety advisory group, that kind of brings together, you know, essentially a representation of all of the company. This includes not only people from super alignment or safety systems of preparedness, but also people from product 
from research. So essentially, like everyone that really kind of is integral to the mission of the of the company to make these decisions, we make recommendations here together. Okay. And you know, there is a bunch of other stuff, and like we, we hope to like relatively soon to make this you know things public, so you'll see it for yourself. But essentially, like this, we need to have things like fast track. What if you learn about something that is very time sensitive? You need to think about safety drills because again, safety is a you know is a you know is something that needs to be trained. It's something that you need to actually learn. So you know, let's do some safety drills so everyone knows what they are supposed to be doing in this in this space. And think about audits because again. Uh, first of all, you might not be able to catch everything, even if you think very hard about this. And also, there is some question of, you know, a public accountability that we care about as well. Okay, so that's all I, what I have to, to say uh, today. If you want to le learn more about preparedness and also our thinking about the fr uh, frontiers risk, we pushed out a blog post uh, a while ago. There's also something called preparedness challenge, which is kind of a good way to find, kind of figure out what kind of, like how do we think about engaging the technical aspects of this work. And guess what? We are hiring, you know, we, are, we hire some amazing people. Tejal and Kevin are there. We need more, we need more of you. So let us know if you're interested. Like everyone would want to work with this bear, right? So, you know, you have an opportunity right now. Thank you. So the sort of advisory board trying to determine whether like the AI is safe or prepared is consisting of only people from OpenAI, which I think has a pretty clear selection bias insofar as who ends up working at OpenAI. What are your thoughts on integrating in some sort of external auditing source, whether it's from academia or existing AI safety researchers? So, okay, so you know that's a, that's a good point. And again, the role of this body is to uh, guide our internal governance. We also have ways of kind of you know getting uh, input from externally, but this is really just, just to operationalize our internal thinking. So I never said that the only input that comes into the uh, deliberation of that body is is coming from you know from inside. But yes, you know we are again we are thinking about this quite a bit. As you know, OpenAI is really like actively working to build up the community of like of red teaming and third party auditors. So this is still a nascent field. Like some of you are working with it, and we want it more. So yes, yeah, so definitely that's something that we. We are very open to and very mindful. Again, I really don't like groupthink. And of course, you know, if you just have people, no matter how brilliant, but from a limited point of like both, you know, there is limited number of them, and also they have similar experiences. Yeah, that will lead to groupthink. So we are aware of that. Sorry. Have you thought about simple reporting mechanisms? Like maybe that's the preparedness challenge, sort of, but maybe just the box or? Yes, yeah, so again, so this is actually in the preparedness framework. So we definitely do like monthly reports internally to this you know like preparedness which is the technical muscle of this is reporting to you know is reporting to uh, to this uh, advisory body and to leadership monthly about updates and so on we are also thinking about kind of making uh, at least like some versions of these reports uh, available uh, publicly as you can imagine there's some sensitivity about like you know uh, capabilities and other things that we might be a little bit careful about but yes we, we also plan to to do that and that's actually more like external people reporting in. Oh, interesting. Uh, so, so definitely that's something that like is part of like, we essentially, when we talk about unknowns, unknowns, like part of where we will be sourcing our in insights will be from externally. But yeah, so that's definitely that. But did you have, unless you had something else in mind as well. Very simple, just Xbox. Sure. Yeah. So we definitely are planning to, you know, to, to uh, gather input from others because, again, at the very least, it will give us ideas of what to look for. But yeah, that might be one way of to operationalize it. Thank you. Not not exactly directly related to your talk, Oleg, and I like Oleg a lot. But it's the second time we have like, you know, teams hiring and so on. I think it's good if this community has a peer-reviewed conference that we kind of submit papers, have academic, you know, discussions and stuff. So not directly related to you. Maybe if you want to, uh, do you think this is the, we need that uh, kind of conference, Oleg? Very nice, a lot. Uh, yes, very nice like putting me on the spot. Yes, so I do think that, by the way, this is the thing when I made this comment that I just discovered there's not that much science in this space. It's just it's such a nascent field. And one way that I know as an academic that brings more science is actually having conferences where people can publish and build on each other's work. So very supportive of that, a lot. <laughs>